be my supreme accomplishment. <laughs> Fellow crafters, fellow guild members, thank you for checking out the very first episode of the Artist DM. Today, we'll be stepping into the Mad Scientist Lab to make these glowing bio tanks. They're pretty easy to make. The materials list is a bit long, but I'm going to walk you through it. The best part is, not accounting for drying times, it takes less than an hour to make these. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the craft. Alright, let's start with materials. First, we have four green colored tea lights. You can find these on Amazon. Next, we have four hair curlers from Dollar Tree. These are pretty useful in a lot of crafts, and they happen to fit perfectly around the glass piece that we'll be using. Here we have these gear buttons from Walmart. Like the hair curlers, I found these extremely useful in a lot of crafts. I even use them on their own as dungeon dressings. Next, we have these glass bottles from Michaels. You can find them in the jewelry section. It's $5 for a pack of two. Now that's a bit pricey for crafting standards, so what I did is I signed up for the reward service they always ask you to do, and they actually give you pretty good coupons. Next I have some sacrificial miniatures. I used the zombies and the ghouls from WizKids, because I found that these particular models fit into the tubes very well after the epoxy was applied. Now if you don't want to sacrifice miniatures, that's fine. The bio tanks still look good without the miniatures. And finally, we have 5 minute epoxy. You're not going to use much for this craft, so one should do the trick. In fact, you'll have a lot left over. And of course you'll need craft paints too, but we'll cover those as we go. Now that we have our materials together, let's go ahead and get into the craft. We're going to start by trimming down the hair curlers. When they're released from the molds, one side tends to be a lot cleaner than the other. So we're going to select the cleaner side to trim down and use for our piece. We're going to start our trimming by cutting above the second ring from the end and then cutting off the excess from that. You're going to be left with something that looks like this. To turn those spikes into something that looks more like rivets, go ahead and rake your knife down and shorten them up significantly. For the sake of modularity, we're going to do a partial assembly for this project. We're going to super glue the hair curlers to the medium gear buttons, and we're going to super glue the tea lights to the large gear buttons, and reinforce that with hot glue. By keeping these pieces modular, we can use them in other applications, getting the biggest bang for our buck. When it comes time to use the bio tanks, we'll just dry fit the pieces together and put them on the table. Super gluing the medium gear buttons to the hair curlers is really easy. However, it's a bit tricky when it comes to super gluing the large gear button to the tea light. In order to achieve some levelness, you want to super glue the handle that you use to turn on the tea light to the area in between the bumps of the large gear button. Double check that it's level, and then you can reinforce it with super glue. Go ahead and lay down some parchment paper, and then we're going to reinforce the bond between the large gear button and the tea light by filling in all the empty space at the bottom with hot glue. To make sure it stays level, we're going to press it down against the parchment paper. For a couple seconds, apply plenty of pressure to the tea light. Leave it there and don't remove it until the glue is completely cooled. Once everything's glued together, put a piece of tape around the light bulb and black bomb everything with spray paint. Once that dries, go in with a bronze acrylic. It might take a couple of coats, but eventually you'll get full coverage. Then highlight with a gold metallic. And with that, you're done with painting. To prep the bottle, take an X-Acto knife and chip away the glue that connects the top piece. Just be mindful, if it's giving you trouble, take care not to break the glass. Eventually it will come off. 
Now for the fun part. Mix up some 5 minute epoxy and add a very conservative amount of paint. Take careful note in the video of how much I use. There's a certain balance of opaqueness versus transparency that needs to be achieved. The epoxy needs to be transparent enough to show the miniature beneath, but it needs to be opaque enough to contain the green light and to slightly obscure the miniature. This ratio creates the illusion of the bottle being full of glowing liquid. Here's what it should look like. The second part to this illusion is to apply a thin layer of epoxy on the interior of the bottle. To do this, get a large gob of epoxy on your popsicle stick, start at the top, and rake it down the sides, evening it out. As the epoxy is curing, make sure to roll the bottles back and forth a few times. You don't want it to settle down all on one side. Now that the epoxy has cured into a thin layer, we can add our miniature. It might be a bit difficult to fit it in, and I found a pair of needle nose pliers really helped. Once you get the miniature to where you like it, we're done. You can see here how it's slightly obscured, but not too much. As stated before, when it comes to game time, just dry fit the pieces together and you got yourself your very own glowing bio tanks. The secret to my sorcery, how to make my glowing bio tanks. I hope this craft inspired you to think outside of the foam, outside of the cardboard, and see everything through the lens of a crafter. If you like what you saw here, please hit that like and subscribe button. I plan on releasing episodes every week. In next week's episode, we'll be making a fungal forest using unique texturing techniques and dirt cheap materials. So again, thank you very much for watching and keep on crafting.